Hello and welcome to another edition of your program of choice, The Darts. A call for good governance and social responsibility. The only television program in Nigeria which focuses on good governance and social responsibility as the best option to improve the lives of the citizens and make the society a better place for us all to live in. My name is Sam Ogwebu, your regular host on the program. On today's edition of your program of choice, we shall be focusing on a training seminar organized by CSR in action in collaboration with the Canadian government. As we all know, oil and gas industry contributes to about 90% of Nigerians' gross domestic product. Hence the importance of this very seminar. We shall take a break here, viewers, and when we return, you get to more about this program. Nourishment. Vote for Cowbell. Cowbell. Here's how to go through your day feeling on top. Start your day on top with Top Tea. Start the top feeling at noon to keep the mood right. Start to unwind feeling refreshed and alert with a cup of Top Tea. Top Tea contains antioxidants and theanine to keep you refreshed and relaxed. Start a great night with Top Tea. Top Tea also comes in tags and two new exciting flavors, lemon and lime and ginger. Top Tea, big bags of flavor. Welcome back. We'll now take you to the seminar proper where the interaction took place. The interaction took the form of one, experts presenting papers. Two, the audience and participants asking critical questions about the problems bedeviling the industry. And three, a panel of experts drawn from NATI, that is, Nigeria Extractive Industry and Transparency Initiative, preferring solutions to the questions raised. Members of the audience also advanced solutions that could help move the NATI sector forward while commending the organizers of the program. One of the things that I discovered when I first joined Chevron is that everything that I knew about Chevron was uh, what was in the daily newspapers. And in fact, in those days, the daily newspapers covered some of the oil industry and not others. And so whatever they say about Shell, you just extrapolate it to the other oil companies. As I, as I went in to be interviewed for the job at Chevron, I realized that I didn't know all the oil companies in Nigeria. And you'd imagine that an industry that provides close to 95% of uh, the, the country's uh, revenues would be known to at least a few uh, educated people in society. But here I was, I was applying for a job in that industry and I couldn't mention more than five uh, companies in the industry. And that's how not uh, so open the industry is. And this might be something that uh, is not entirely deliberate. The oil industry operates in very remote areas. Um, there are very few people, I mean, everyone reads about the Niger Delta, but when you ask how many Nigerians have actually been to the Niger Delta, or how long they've stayed in the Niger Delta, you'll be quite surprised that very few people have. And so, because the industry is located in remote areas, what people know of the industry is what they see on the headquarters in Lagos, uh, 
They don't understand the kind of relationship that goes between the industry and the people who are close to its operations in, in the Delta. Uh, and, and so there was a need for the industry to be more open. Uh, and unfortunately at that time, the, the government of Nigeria was military. So it, it was, in the first instance, it didn't encourage uh, the media to be as adventurous, so to say, as they could otherwise be. And if we can put that amount side by side at the level of development that we see in the country, it, it gives us uh, a pause for concern. What's important if we are going to achieve sustainable growth is that both government and the industry, as well as non-governmental organizations, the civil society and communities all come together and channel the huge revenues that's coming out of this industry into investments that would promote other economic activities. I do not think that the country can look to the future that is are solely dependent on the industry as the past has been. But I think that the, the, the future for Nigeria is diversification of the economy. And we see that already. We see government looking into the areas of agriculture. We see government looking into uh, the areas of tourism. Uh, we see different uh, ideas coming out. We can use the revenues coming out of the industry to diversify the economy, to build uh, the infrastructure that you require to, to, to grow the economy. A few years ago, I, I worked with a group of people in Chevron to take another look at our community engagement strategy. And in order to do this, we said, listen, one of the fundamental values of Chevron is transparency, honesty, integrity. We cannot address an issue if we are not open and transparent about it. In order for us to understand what has gone wrong, let's not just ask ourselves what has gone wrong, let's ask those with whom we have relationships. So we started this engagement with non-governmental organizations, civil society, with governments, with the communities, and, and we, we, what we found out is that even though we've had a long-standing relationship uh, with all these entities, what they know about us is not what we think of ourselves. And what they expect of us is totally out of context with what we thought uh, our, our responsibilities were. It turns out that after many years of military governments in Nigeria, uh, in many of the communities, the, the relationship between society and government has been so straightened that the industry had, had stepped into that gap. And for some reason, many of the communities have started to see the oil company as a pseudo-government. Of the fact that Canada is quite present, as, as there are other countries in, in Africa, of course, such as you know, Australia and more and more China, um, South Africa, of course, being another investor in this in this sector. But if I wanted to illustrate a little bit better what I'm trying to get at, this was the slide that I was speaking to before. Is this? which pretty much tells a story of how much more investment has come into Africa from Canadian companies. In less than a decade, I'd say in about five years, we've gone from $17 billion of investment to today $31 billion. I do believe that at early, uh, there was some mention about uh, how how fast our investment is growing. 
these statistics come from our Natural Resources Canada, which is our department that handles everything that has to do with natural resources. When you see the oil and gas and the mining sector. <clears throat> For instance, if a company is operating in a very remote area of Burkina Faso, it shouldn't be expected that it is that the company is the answer to all of the various uh, needs and various uh, um, infrastructure that that community needs. The company can become a partner, should be a partner, with the national government, with the regional government, with the local community, the municipality. You know, um, Canada's position is that CSR is voluntary. As a matter of fact, if CSR uh, moves from voluntary to a legislative approach, it's no longer CSR. In other words, companies are expected to meet all the local and international standards. Providing service and care to all, all the residents of the state and country. I'm not pro-government, but at the same time, I'm not anti-government. I'm just one Nigerian that's able to look at things critically. It could have happened to, happen to any of my staff here. So what would I do to say that government cannot do everything? Good governance is to comply by the law and be able to offer something more in a balanced fashion to the environment yeah. and to the law. I think corporate social responsibility can be part of the balance of the laws. These are things that we need to discuss as a people to, because progress of our values. Don't say what you don't do, do what you can and make sure you do it properly. Government alone cannot do everything. Corporate bodies, wealthy individuals should all synergize with the government to improve the lives of the citizens and make the society a better place for us all to live in. Sustainability project is basically on the human capital development. Being in the education sector, I want to draw attention to one or two things that militate against corporate relationship between Nigeria and Canada, especially in the education sector. Now, for us to sustain the extractive industry, we have to learn. I saw in your newsletter on page 7 your relationship or efforts in the education sector. Nigerians here like to go to Canada for trainings and education. And in my office, we are in charge. We cooperate with the Canadian Embassy and several, uh, several commissions in Canada in that aspect. But we are having a challenge at the moment, which is bridge that relationship and cooperation between Nigeria and Canada in the sector. We say responsibility. We are also looking at enlightening some interests. In which case, if I as a company want to see myself as a Boeing concern, I need to be self-enlightened to the extent that when I do what is right, I am accountable and transparent, and I invite the other indices of CSR, the company grows, I'm able to instill value and help the community. So it is my responsibility to make sure the company is a Boeing concern. So you can look at corporate responsibility from the angle. Now, um, on the issue of community development, that is pretty complex in Nigeria because Nigeria is a very, very complex country. And if we do not go back to the history of the company, uh, the socioeconomic and political system we have, and why we have, for instance, a what capitalist um, system that is not enabling CSR to thrive in the country, we just may not be able to understand CSR and instill it. We have a long way to go. In South Africa, for instance, they look at CSR strictly for BEE, Black Economic Empowerment. And so there might be a need for us to start thinking of a paradigm shift. And it's so complex because we've got to look at leadership. Why is leadership in Nigeria not accountable and transparent? Companies cannot operate in a vacuum. 
why can't we try policies and regulations that would help instill CSR as a holistic system? So we have a long way to go. Uh, this is just the beginning. The good thing about it is we can carry on with the discussions, um, look at where to start from, but there really is a need in Nigeria to begin to have a conversation around understanding the term, whether it is philanthropy, as it is historically, yes, even from biblical times, we can run away from it because small companies might want to do it as a charitable venture because they cannot afford to maybe be a zenith bank that can do certain things for the next 10, 15 years. Now, should we say they are not doing corporate social responsibility? That is debatable. So for me, really, I thank the organizers for doing this because I've always thought that there's a need to have a conversation ongoing in Nigeria. It's, it's got to start from the leadership, and then it's got to be driven down to the youths. We've got to have a paradigm shift so we can understand what the term means. We can start with ourselves, with me, and then we can cast it. And we're saying yes, there's a part for the um, government to, to play, which is very true. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, um, in that dimension, uh, for instance, you know, you have the construction companies working in areas and you find um, the communities bordering them because they expect some kind of responsibility to be, or some kind of CSR activities to be done in those areas. Usually the oil companies do this because you have a work program, you have a budget, and it's all part of that, so you're able to cost recover it. So it's easy to be able to defend it, you know. But companies, like construction companies, I don't know how they work, but I would assume that they don't have that kind of leeway. That's something the government should at least look into. If it's by way of allowing them to expense it or whatever, I don't know how it's going to work. But they need to do that. That will enable everyone to have it as a more collective thing and it will be invited in other industries as well. The other thing I have to say is that it's not enough to, to be responsible for the areas that you work and the companies that you work. But what about down the line? The company, your contractors, how do they work? You know, are they doing what their service for you? If there's a problem, you, your company will be linked to it, you know, because you have contracted them to do a service. So you have to be sure as well that even the contractors and the people that you relate with are incorporating CSR in their activities. CSR, CSR, meaning whatever R is, uh, whatever you choose to call it, is actually a survival imperative for business. It's no longer uh, it, it is clear if the, the, the recent happenings in the world financial market and what led to some of the crisis in terms of disclosures, in terms of how companies have not shown uh, uh, enough accountability or responsibility to their investors or to their regulators, has made it clear that we really have a lot to lose in the long term by not being transparent and by not being accountable. Um, you automatically invite strong regulations, um, you automatically invite, uh, you lose your benefit of the doubt, and you 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 become the subject of intense scrutiny by watchdogs and by every other person that is interested in that particular issue. When I talk with some of the, the leaders within a company like Nexon, they too have problems with a term like corporate social responsibility. They would ask me and they say, well, Jeff, well, yes, we have responsibilities, but CSR, does this mean that only corporations have responsibilities in this area? Um, what about government responsibility, government social responsibility? What about communities? What about NGOs and broader society? So I hear that inside a business enterprise as well. Why is this responsibility sit only with, with, with corporations? And so that's, again, a problem that we see around semantics. Um, so what I, in, in my presentation today, even though our general uh, theme is CSR or sustainability, um, I chose to focus specifically on, on stakeholder engagement as a dimension of CSR to, to, to demonstrate that it's beyond philanthropy, as, as we touched on. Canadian responsibility, anyway. Just on visas, let me just make very, very clear, and I just made that point to the media. The door is open to Canada. We want Nigerians to come to Canada to visit, to study, to do business. No question about that. The more, the better. Uh, the problem has been, particularly over the last year or so, that uh, we're the victims of our own success. We've had a 50% rise in the number of students going to Canada in one year. 
Uh, frankly, we were expecting that. Uh, so our capacity to deal with it has been, you know, is limited. We have the same capacity we had a year ago. So I apologize that we are a bit delayed in, in uh, managing the issuance of visas. Nourishment. Vote for Cowbell. Cowbell. Here's how to go through your day feeling on top. Start your day on top with Top Tea. Start the top feeling at noon to keep the mood right. Start to unwind feeling refreshed and alert with a cup of Top Tea. Top Tea contains antioxidants and theanine to keep you refreshed and relaxed. Start a great night with Top Tea. Top Tea also comes in tags and two new exciting flavors, lemon and lime and ginger. Top Tea, big bags of flavor. Some of the organizers and sponsors comment. It's pretty clear why it is the exa uh, extractive industries. Um, if you checked it, it's, they contribute 90% of our national revenue. And um, so it's critical to our national development. We all say that uh, we have issues in the country, we have issues of democratic governance. Um, so why not address that industry that would truly boost uh, long-term economic growth? And for those who don't know, we actually have this report out. It's called uh, the Collective Social Investment Report Nigeria 2012. Okay. Uh, it's a CSR encyclopedia. It tells you everything that you need to know about social investment activities by the public, uh, by the private sector. So uh, it breaks it down into community, workplace environment. And then if you want to forge partnerships, you can also read this book and uh, see partners in whatever area you're doing, whether it's health, education, you're doing work in health education, or whatever, because there's a glossary at the back that basically summarizes it. The theme of the program being what it is about corporate social responsibility in the extractive industries um, is a natural habitat for us. Uh, first, because we play in the extractive industry space, and then secondly, because CSR is something that is of top priority in Owando. Okay, uh, and when we say CSR, we don't mean corporate philanthropy. We are talking about the all-inclusiveness of being responsible across your value chain. Okay, so in our dealings with all our stakeholder groups, we make sure that we exhibit a lot of deliberate sensibility and responsibility across the line. CSR is a passion that we have in Chevron. We, we believe that... Uh, uh, our company is not just um, an oil and gas company. We are a company that is in Nigeria for the long term and uh, we have to behave uh, like a, a corporate citizen of Nigeria. Corporate Social Responsibility or CSR is a major policy thrust of the Canadian government. Uh, we've had a policy on this for about three years. Uh, we think it's uh, good business for Canadian companies to apply the principles of good corporate social responsibility. As you know, Canada is a gigantic extractive uh, industry. We have about 350 mines around the world, uh, worth about $50 billion uh, annually for us. Also a big oil and gas sector, one of the world's largest energy producers. So our companies are active, of course, in Canada and outside of Canada, including in Africa. 
So we are heavily engaged. We want to see our stake in this uh, global industry grow. But we know that, uh, and our companies know, that for them to succeed uh, in, uh, in, these, in these areas, in these countries, they've got to take on the principles of corporate social responsibility. At the end of the one-day program, everybody was satisfied with the issues raised and solutions provided. However, as lofty as these solutions are, the important question is, are our policymakers ready to integrate these public views by stakeholders in the industry into a policy framework that will help move the sector forward so that it can take its rightful position in the affairs of this nation? Yes, that's the much we can take on this program today. Until I come your way again, same time, same station, on this same program, please keep being socially responsible and entrenching good governance in any position you find yourself. That is the only way we can improve the lives of the citizens and make the society a better place for us all to live in. My name is Sam Ogwebu. Bye for now and have a blessed week ahead.